Good evening and happy Friday. Welcome to another episode of the NAACP Chicago West Side Branch. I'm your host, Tara Levy, and tonight we have a wonderful guest. My good friend, my play cousin, Edward Evans. Mr. Evans is a up-and-coming songwriter, actor, and just all-around amazing artist based here in Chicago. Mr. Evans, welcome. Thank you, Miss Levy. It's a pleasure <laughs> to be here. So, we're going to talk about a really important topic tonight. It's about our lovely city, Chicago, and talking about what it means to us. The makings of our Chicago, that includes the west side, the south side, the north side, and those in between. For example, I was born in Oak Park, but because like all of my livelihood is so based on the west side of Chicago, I claim myself as like an honorary member of the west side. West side. West side, aka the best side. But we have love for all. And tonight we're going to showcase just the different talents and the different gems that are located on the west side, south side, and all of north side. Edward also is from Oak Park, but you've been all around too. Yes, that I was born actually in Maywood, which is the west suburbs similar to Oak Park, but Oak Park is actually interesting because it's on the borderline mm -hmm. of Chicago. So yeah, the west side right there, and then Oak Park is literally, not even next door, I would say, like, yeah. is like a part of the west side, but it's like the outskirts of the west side. And there, I feel like there's such a difference, like daylight and darkness between west side, Austin neighborhood versus Oak Park, even though they're right by each other. Right. Um, the west side, to me, is what I call home. Even though I'm from Oak Park, what really resonates with me is the west side of Chicago. Because I went to school, Providence St. Mel, for 12 years there. I go to church in Austin. My family's from Austin. So I really call that home. And plus, we have the best chicken ever. I say Uncle Remus. Uncle Remus. All the Uncle Remus. Outsiders may want to argue and say Harold's, but I'm going to say it's Uncle Remus. And we originated footworking. We did originate footworking. There's so much culture and so much art. <clears throat> Love to the Pope. On the west side. Shout out to the Pope. We're actually going to feature this really cool video of footworking, how it originated on the west side. I'm really excited about that. It's your boy Paul Zeddy. And today we're going to show you guys how we do some Chicago footwork. This move. It's called the Urkin Journey. So as you can see, there's a lot of a lot of talent, a lot of high energy here on the west side, but we'll be remiss not to also show love to the other sides of Chicago. Chicago, our great city, is home to over 20 neighborhoods in the city. Um, we talked about the west side, so that includes the Garfield Park, Austin, Humble Park area. Oftentimes, that area doesn't get a lot of love. The dome is there, the gold dome, where Golden a lot of us dome. play basketball. Mm -hmm. I remember, um, again, I went to Providence St. Mel for 12 years. I would go after school 
to the programming at the Golden Dome. The conservatory is right down the street from the Golden Dome. So it's a lot of beauty, a lot of richness on the west side of Chicago. We want to definitely get that some love. And a lot of people I know are really big fans of Bronzeville. Bronzeville is a historic neighborhood on the city's Chicago South Side. Um, it's like the Black Mecca, like a Harlem, but of Chicago. A lot of great arts and culture. Um, gallery Gachard is a beautiful black-owned gallery there. The South Side includes areas like High Park, Kenwood, South Loop, South Shore. And even my honorary cousin, I love him. I feel like he's my cousin, Chance. <laughs> Chance the Rapper. So we're going to hear from my cousin Chance about his feelings towards Chicago. Growing up in Chicago is, is a blessing. And I think one of my major influences in terms of who I am as a man and as a creator. Chicago has a very communal feel to it. And because of that, growing up here, even if you moved here and created music, once you're on the scene, you kind of get a close connection to the people that are invested in. It's important to educate the city on its history about you know, Harold Washington being the first black mayor of Chicago and Chicago being the center for the civil rights movement. I think it's just important to engage uh, kids because everybody's a kid at one point and everybody hopefully gets to be an adult and I always like to interact with kids on, on a dance level, on a teaching level. I used to do listening parties at streetwear stores like Juggernaut and Leaders. I sold out Reggie's Rock Club, Lincoln Hall, the Metro, all those venues. You know, there was a point where hip hop wasn't their forte or what they did at all. My generation, I think, brought hip hop back and brought those those hip hop tickets back. And now those are our most popular shows in the city. Those are what sells out every weekend or every other weekend. There's no point where I don't feel like I'm from Chicago or don't feel like what I'm doing reflects Chicago or don't think about the effects or ramifications of what I do in terms of the city. So it's the way it was built, the way that it functions, keeps me here and keeps me close. All right, so that was my cousin Chance. I just think he's doing such great work uh, with Chicago Public Schools, getting funding for that. You never had to worry about um, getting the and just really just giving Chicago some positive publicity. Because again, our city is a great city. We do have our issues, but I think we still need to give our city some love. Also, Chance does a lot of outreach programs and with through his organization, Social Works. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was actually a part of it um, while I was in the acting program, actually, at UIC. Chance came and held, I believe he calls it open mic, where mm -hmm. he allows high school students to show their ID and to get free entry into an open mic uh, performance, basically. So poetry, you can, ranging, you know, sonnets, soliloquies to songs, um, even some um, musicians playing trumpets, yeah, violin. So he opens up the doors for everyone, and he's always reaching out to the community, especially the youth. So because you're like born and raised, I would say, in Chicago, what have been like some of your experiences with growing up in Oak Park, a western suburb, but also like living and thrive as an adult in Chicago? Um, well, I would say growing up in Oak Park, I saw the Midwest for what it was. So it's very black and white here versus I would say in New York or the West Coast, LA, where it's African, Italian, you either identify as black or white. Mm -hmm. And that's really the division I had growing up is either black or white. Mm -hmm. And Oak Park is the same thing, black and white. So low income, high income, we're all really middle class, upper middle class, but they love to have that division, division that yeah. split. So I even grew up with Vic Menza's manager, uh, Cody Kazarian, and um, growing up around these different artists and kind of seeing behind the scenes of what 
goes on. Mm -hmm. It's all very intricate and interesting, but it all the, is a synergy. Depending on the individual, I can't. I hate to generalize and say that everyone is one way or the other, but definitely we were programmed to be black or white. You would say living in Oak Park. I would say so. Okay. It looks like we have a caller. Let's see. Hello, caller? Oh, did we lose him? Did we lose him? Okay. Well, definitely feel free to chime in with the discussion. Now at 312-738-1060. We're curious to see what side do you rep? Do you represent the west side, the south side, the suburbs, or north side, or east side? As well as, like, what are your thoughts? Chime in now with the discussion. Oh, we do have I'll a call caller. Him. Yes, caller. Hi, how are you doing? Hi. How are you? Great, how are you? I'm doing well. So I was listening to your positivity about Chicago. You guys are doing such a great job representing Chicago. I just have one question, though. What makes Uncle Remus better chicken than Harold? <laughs> I think Harold is, like, <laughs> the best chicken. So I just would like to know which one. <laughs> okay, so here's the thing. Um, thank you for calling in. All right, we love it when people call in and watch our show. I think I've just been programmed to Uncle Remus because I've had it for so long, and it wasn't until recently until I started doing like more of my work and like traveling out south that I was exposed to Harold's. Harold's is great chicken. Um, but this is what I'm used to, Uncle Remus. And Uncle Remus represents home to me. Like I find it mostly on the west side. The breading is better <laughs> at Uncle Remus. <laughs> we have, we another, have another caller. Hello. Hello, caller. Hi, how are you? I'm Will, how are you? I'm just wanting, uh, this is my first time calling in. Okay. Uh, Welcome. When I saw that the, you know, that you were pretty much going to be talking about the West Side, I had to continue to watch. I am a native West Sider. Um, even when I lived on the South Side, I still would represent the West Side. <laughs> so, I mean, I was a taxpayer on the South Side with a home, but when I'm at the club and they say, where the West Side is at, I'm West side, West side. Throw up the dub. Another West Side. I, I, I hate the fact that most people downgrade the West Side. I know the South Side does not come to the West Side. The West Side is so south. We go everywhere. And that's the only thing that I, I really kind of hate with our community because, you know, there's crime everywhere. And I do understand that the South Side was at a point where the the more middle class blacks lived at one time and the more underprivileged blacks lived on the west side because of the type of jobs that were available. You have uh, the South Shore area, you have Beverly on the south side. So of course those blacks, you know, feel more elite than the, you know, the working class blacks that live on the west side. So I believe that's where the division lies. Even in the sense of fashion, I noticed in high school, I'm not going to really say how old I am, but you know, during my time in high school, there was a big difference, you know, in the type of fashion. The uh, South Side had more of a, a higher designer level, than, you know, than we do on the West Side. So, you know, I, I just wish that we could get along better. Because mm -hmm. um, we're all the same, but we're all black, we're all fighting for the same cause. And to also piggyback on the other caller about, you know, the Uncle Remus. Uncle Remus is better. Uncle Remus <laughs> is definitely better. Yes. Well, you know what, ma'am? I appreciate you for calling Uncle in. Remus. I got people coming in, coming in from way from the South Server. Uh -huh. yes. Thank you for calling in. Yes, thank and, you and for And to calling chime in off of what you know, said. You Thank you. The crime, um, oh, yeah. well, yeah. she didn't say the crime, but the, the I, forget, I don't remember, but when we migrate, when blacks, free blacks migrated to the north, the south side was kind of the first part you would hit. And um, 
There was even communities put together specifically on the south side for blacks migrating from the south mm -hmm. Mississippi, those areas. And the west side was predominantly Greek, Polish. Right. right. And uh, due to, you know, white flight, that's why a lot of the, uh, the hoods uh, started forming on the west side. But that was yeah. a very good point that she brought up. Yeah, and that's a great point you just brought up. Um, my dad, he's actually, he's an old man. My dad, he was born in Leland, Mississippi. And he is number seven out of 15. Wow. And yeah, fun fact, I thought you knew yeah. that. But no, yeah. I never knew Chuck. No. <laughs> uh, yeah, so he's one out of uh, 15. And when he was about two years old, uh, he and his, my, my grandparents and my aunts and uncles, they moved to the south side of Chicago because as Edward mentioned, that was where a lot of people like post-slavery moved, but then also like during the civil rights movement, during the civil rights era, they moved during that time as like a, a rebuilding and a fresh start. Like moving up north was like a sense of a new life, newness. Um, and because there was pretty much like white people inhabiting the west side of Chicago, we weren't welcome there. It wasn't until things got bad with the riots. With the, the, after uh, Dr. King. After Dr. Killed. King, that's when there was transition. Like you know what, this is too much, too much riffraff happening. People right then were not welcoming blacks, but they wanted to move to the western suburbs to move out of the west side of Chicago and then like leave to go to like places like Oak Park or Westchester or Forest Park. And that's when black people moved into the city because it was cheaper. But now you see gentrification, there's a switch. They want their spots back. They're raising rent. They're raising things like gas prices. Why in North London is almost $4 for gas? I can go to Oak Park, I can go to LaGrange and it's like, Three dollars, maybe. Yeah. You know, so it's like there are signs like that. Well, you can see there's a shift that's on its way. What do you think would be like not a cure, but like a way to a remedy, a remedy to gentrification, especially when you see it happening so frequently now? Well, I've heard it's happening in almost every major city. I heard Brooklyn is getting uh, <laughs> there's a lot of Whole Foods yeah. popping up in Brooklyn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, a lot of people walking their dogs uh, mm -hmm. late at night. A lot of joggers. Um, a solution to really, I mean, I know black evolution takes black place. Black homeowners are, are needed. And right. I don't think that having more grocery stores in our community is a bad thing. We need fresh produce in inner cities on the west side of Chicago. We right. need those things. But when you try to push those people out, there lies the problem. When you want to raise your rent for those who can really afford to pay what it is now, that's a problem. And that tells the narrative that black people there are not welcomed and they should move elsewhere. And black people are actually the number one consumer. Well, African Americans are the number one consumer in America. You can Google that uh, to, to fact check me. And they, they're actually closing a target over east, I can't remember the exact location, but they said due to low traffic, but then they're opening one, I believe, um, closer to like High Park, like mm -hmm. around University of Chicago. And it really doesn't make sense. Uh, you get the better resources to this demographic and then mm -hmm. take it away from another demographic. If you're not getting the results you're looking for, okay, but it, that seemed like a false narrative to me, and I did my research on it. and. There really, I hope there comes a solution in the near future for gentrification. Absolutely, and we can all coexist yes. without having yeah, and I feel such like a split. I think Chicago. I love my city. This is where I call home. But there's such a division within the different neighborhoods. But let's take a look at our map. Like you can pinpoint where certain people live. Okay, Garfield Park, you can predict, okay, those are mostly black people. You go to Pilsen, most Hispanic population. You go to Greektown, which is right by Garfield Park, a whole different community. And I believe that since we all are like right by each other, why not find a way to just, as you say, coexist, coexist. and not try to push certain groups out of a neighborhood. But again, we are here to still share a positive light on Chicago because we have such so many great things going on. Um, another way to make Chicago the city that you want to see it is to make sure you get out the vote. We have a lot of people running for mayor for the city of Chicago coming up. Be informed. Be informed. Make sure you do your research 
of those who are running to be your next elected official. Because they have a lot of say, a lot of power with how they're going to make Chicago. Are you be. endorsing anyone, Terry? We are not endorsing anyone. How are you? <laughs> uh, but, you know, feel free to holler at me after the show and we can talk about who I'm, you know, supporting. Viewing. I, viewing. Yeah. You know, I would like to see uh, representation. I would say that. You know, it would be nice to have, like, maybe a, a black female mayor one day. That's all. I like to sound of that. You know. But, um, again, call us now. There's still time before we wrap up to chime in, to share your two cents at 312-738-1060. And, again, tell us what you think about the different areas of Chicago. What has been your experiences being on the west side, the south side, the north side, even the suburbs? We've been around all of it, you know? And I want to hear some north side experiences. Uh, Uptown, Wilson area, Rogers. Yeah. Evanston. I feel like whenever we do, like, roll calls, the north side and east side is always, like, the last. Really? Yeah, like, if, like yeah, west side, where you at? South side, where you at? And right. it's like, you are probably ever hear from the north side. So we want to uh -huh. hear from you. We are like West Siders, honorary West Siders. We heard from a West Sider. We got a call from a South Sider. We need some like some diversity with it, you know? Well, you think about we, we the love North it side. all. The North Side, I feel like there that's a more diverse group. I agree. You know, like there's mm -hmm. there's something happening all over. There's black owned coffee shops, there's also Greek owned coffee shops, there's also a great Asian population. Like so it's like a little bit of everything. And that's what I like to see. Like, I would love to live in a community where I can just see, I can see us, but I can also see different people as well. And we have a caller. Hey, caller. Hello. <laughs> Hi. Hi. My name is Connie. Hi, Hi Connie. Connie. <laughs> Hi, how are you? <laughs> Great, how are, how are you? you? I'm good. <laughs> no, I, I, I just tuned in. I was channel surfing. I just tuned in. I said, let me see what they're talking about. Um, but I've been living on the west side all my life. I'm 67. I grew up in Lindale, and when I left Lindale, I moved to the south side briefly, but I'm back on the west side. Mm. And um, I, I love the west side. I mean, <laughs> I'm a lifelong west sider, and I, I don't see anything wrong with the west side. A lot of people uh, criticize the west side as being violent or, you know, the, however they talk about our side of town, but I love it over here. I do a lot of my shopping and stuff um, in the western suburbs because I feel um, I don't like to get my business out there, but it's, it, my neighborhood can't serve my needs. That's what I'm trying to say. And I would like to see um, before the uh, post, um, Dr. King, the, the riots in the 60s, the 68 riots, I lived through that. I saw the area around me, everything burned. The mm. shops on uh, Roosevelt and Kedzie, the Madison and um, Pulaski. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We used to do all that shopping. I would like to see that come back to our area. Me as well. Absolutely, absolutely. Because at one point, the West Side was thriving. Uh, Madison exactly. Street. A lot of black-owned mm -hmm. businesses there. Chicago Avenue. Chicago is still right. a very big yeah. hub for A lot of black-owned businesses, black businesses there. We got to get it back up, y'all. We have to. If not us, then who? Right. You know? That's what I'm, I'm thinking. You know, I don't know what I can do, but, I mean, it, I, I don't, I'm not a business owner. I'm a retired uh, uh, hospital worker. I was a, I'm a, I was a cancer registrar. I worked at Rush University, Loyola, West, mm -hmm. uh, West Suburban, and St. Elizabeth's Hospitals. So I'm retired now, but, you know, I would like to see some businesses come back to our area, and I would like to do my shopping in my own area. Absolutely. But, it, you know, it's, there's really nothing around here, and I have to take my business, um, you know, Elsewhere. either to the suburbs or, some, you know, someplace else. And, and it's sad, you yeah. know. It's yes. sad. And it was us, really, that tore up. Yeah, <laughs> West Side, you know, and it's it's bad. And, and we I have to really rebuild. Like to see that, yeah, it has to be have to rebuild. We thank you, Miss Connie, for calling in. Thank we you do so have another caller on the line, but I appreciate you okay. for stopping and watching us. Yeah, all right, you. Our, God bless you. And God, God bless you. Have, you. Well, have, have a great evening. weekend. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. All right, we have another caller. Caller, are you still there? Yeah. Hello. Hi. How you doing? 
Hi, uh, you were looking for a North Side or? North Side, hey, yes. You came through. Welcome. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, um, so I've lived on the near south side. I lived on the near west side, um, and uh, I lived on the northwest side, but now I'm in Uptown. And uh, uptown, I, I only yeah. tuned into your show basically midway through what you're talking about. But I really think uh, you mentioned our elected officials. I think we should look uh, more toward our aldermen, and we should try to create a, a neighborhood on those parts of town that sort of that are underserved. Mm -hmm. And Absolutely. I see it sometime in the news where people are protesting. They want jobs in their community. They don't want. They want businesses in their community, and they want the jobs to go to the people who live in their community yes. and thrive. And I think that's what we have in Uptown. I know we've had um, several older persons since I've been living here. And I and uh, when originally when I moved here, we did not have much community or business. But now, of the weekend, I can literally live in my neighborhood without going out shopping. Mm. I can have Target, I have um, Aldi's, I have Jewel, all within walking distance. I used to have a um, Walmart, but, you know, they packed up and moved. But I really think it's the aldermen that the people have to put pressure on them mm -hmm. to bring commerce to their area and have the areas thrive because you shouldn't have to leave your neighborhood. Absolutely. To purchase things and to live I don't care if it's a laundromat. I don't care if it's a bodega, like a little corner grocery store. Mm -hmm. or I don't care if it's like a shoe shop or you're going shopping for your kids' clothing or haircuts. All of that can be in the community. Yes. It's yes. small business, and I think the aldermen, we need to put pressure on them to, to do this, to um, just sort of like um, uh, just, just bring what the people want in their community to, mm -hmm. to them. I did see um, Rush, he was protesting against the um, Target's closing, which is a young man mentioned there, and uh, he said that we should sort of like boycott Target, you know, yeah. you know whatever it takes. But um, I, I do believe it's uh, election. we got to get out and vote. Absolutely. Get out the Absolutely. vote. Stop the hate vote. It says it there. Yeah. And also you vocalizing your opinion and being a part of your community yes. also is Be a active. big contribution. Thank you so much for calling Absolutely. in. Absolutely. Thank you, callers, for chiming into the conversation. We love to hear your views. We appreciate you for calling tonight. We're going to wrap up the show. But before we conclude, do you want to have any like final words? Any final thoughts you want to final express? Final thoughts to close. Just be kind to each other. <laughs> Everyone be vocal. Yeah. Everyone do your own independent research. Don't go off of just our information. I love for everyone to be mm -hmm. enticed by what we're saying, but I also love for you to have your own opinion and have your own sources and have your own independent thought on everything. Absolutely. I thank you, Elwood, for being in our show today. It's thank what, you, it was a joy. For it was a joy. Again, thank you all for calling in. We had a really great conversation. All the sides pretty much represented. We had the west side, the north side, the south side, east side. You know, maybe next time. Maybe next time. We know what the best side is, but it's okay. It's all love either way it goes. Uh